Hello there. I'm therapist Bob O'Larry, and welcome to therapy with Bob O'Larry. It's been a little while for me. You might remember from a while ago with my controversial cure by sending a patient to open a pickaxe factory in the Congo or something along those lines. I had to disappear for a while to run from the feds, but I'm back and I have a new client with me today. How about you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry, is this too comfortable? I always like to make things as comfortable as possible, but... Oh no, you're, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're great, Doc. You're great. Okay, good. Some find my methods unconventional. Why? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> People just aren't ready for the truth. And they're not ready to heal truly, like I know you can. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why you're here today? Uh, well, Doc, I've uh, been having some issues, you see. Uh, been uh, thinking a lot about Nam lately. Nam, that was a rough period. Why don't you tell us a little about it? <laughs> well, you know, uh, it was just, it was just, uh, just uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of Creedence Clearwater. Uh, oh. Very, uh, very muggy. Uh, little, little, little orangey, you know, going on. An orange mist. Oh, gosh. I can only imagine running through the hot, the hot, <laughs> the hot landscape. Well, here in, here in, uh, oh, what's his name? <laughs> You know, the Cretan's Clearwater guy. Heard him in the background, and have you seen him lately? Scary. And it's like ridden through a cloud of tang. That had to have been rough. Yes, yes, very, very rough. And I imagine these, uh, these occurrences, they probably affect your day-to-day. -day. Yes, yes, well, it just, uh, seems like anything and everything sets me off, Doc. Everything. So say uh, you wake up in the morning and you are following your usual morning routine and you see me in your bathroom using your toothbrush. Would you say that would set you off? <laughs> oh, well, Doc, I mean, honestly, I'd say that's pretty normal. I think so too, but some people just aren't ready for the truth. Now say that I took your toothbrush and I started using it to clean a very sensitive area such as my forearms, how would that make you feel? Well, Doc, I suppose it would uh, remind me of a thing or two. A thing or two? You must have seen some things back there. Quite a few things, quite a few things. What do you think that specific back and forth brushing motion might remind you of? Well, you see, Doc, in, uh, in the POW camps, they, uh, well, they, uh, they, try, they try to break you pretty hard. Pretty hard. Hard. In a, in a not very soft place. Oh, boy. You're talking like your, your knee bone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's one of the hardest places on my body. Mm -hmm. That's rock solid. Can you hear that? Have you ever heard a noisy knees cap like that? That's pretty loud. It's hard. You, you should go see a doc, doc. Maybe I should. But honestly, man, the only doc that I need is right here. It's this little tiny thimble that got lodged next to my heart when I was six years old. And I think that's what gave me my power. Because that kind of stuff will give you strength, man. It'll give you strength. And I want you to remember that the next time somebody uses your toothbrush in a less than desirable area. Strength. So one of the first things, and something I already noticed backstage, and this is the first thing I always like to suggest to anybody struggling, is my first suggestion, have you started drinking? Right? Okay, you know, we all do it. Okay, and it's one of the best things for you. Because we all know that to get to the root of a problem, 
The best thing to do is to drown it under a sea of whiskey. That's the best thing for you. And don't you let anyone tell you different. Absolutely. The next time you're in your bar, you know, tell them that they better be thanking you for your service and giving you round number 12. Because that's what you need for your soul, man. That's what you need. Drinking in bar fights. That's that's the real medicine. I uh, think so. The liberal media doesn't want to tell you that. They don't. They don't. But when have you ever seen CNN in a bar? You haven't. And that's why they've never been in a bar fight. Woke. Yeah, so my next uh, suggestion is... Uh, did you hear that? <laughs> it was probably nothing. Now, as you can see, our kind, gentle, and loving guest here has a pillow on his lap. Now, this can help him with a variety of things, like to hide something obvious that he doesn't want other people to see that could be slightly embarrassing. Like the shame and the guilt that he carries with him from all those years ago. How has this pillow helped you? Well, Doc, it just makes me feel less alone. Less alone. Reminds you of maybe any, um, past companions you might have had? Like a service dog or a, maybe a pet guinea pig? Well, sir, it reminds me of, uh... The way we used to spend our free time in uh, uh in the uh back in Nam in the in the in the cities. That must have been something. We we raided those bushes as best as we can. Make I sure nothing was hiding in there. I bet you did. So these are two of my most common solutions that I recommend to all of my clients. Now let's delve a little deeper into this. Why don't you tell us how you spend your day-to-day -day life? Well, Doc, I start off <laughs> waking up from my night terrors in a cold sweat, uh, thrashing around, saying, You'll never get me alive, you bastards! And uh, then I realize where I am, and, uh, you know, calms me down, calms me down. I have to stop you right there, because that sounds like my last four weekends. Continue. Well, and then, uh, I make a traditional American breakfast of, uh, bacon, eggs, and whiskey. And, um, I, get, I make that hard, that hard coffee with the whiskey, and I, uh, I mix it up with the tip of my revolver. And, uh, just it tastes like freedom, Doc. It tastes like that. freedom. I love that. And I love things like a traditional American breakfast because, as has been very evident lately in our country, um, traditional American everything has been great for us lately, I think. Has been really doing us wonders, and um, I just think we're better than ever. Really. So, uh, do, you, do you go to a job? Do you have any hobbies? Well, you know, I like to... I like to stand out in the street corner and uh, just, you know, kind of mumble incoherent nonsense at passer passerbys. And uh, some give me money because they think I'm uh, homeless. They, uh, well, you know, who, who, who am I to disillusion them? You know, so... Uh, Absolutely. Let them live their truth. <laughs> Let them live their truth. So, uh, usually, at the end of the day, I'll... Uh, Take whatever money I've collected and, uh, well, I'll, I'll go to the bar. Go to the bar. Spoken like a true patriot, really. I think. That's, uh, that's when I'll, uh, enjoy a couple of shots. Maybe, uh, maybe feel up, uh, a thing or two. And, uh, and I'll, uh, I just go home. man. <laughs> you talking about, like, you know, the smooth surface of the bar and the way that the cup drips in your hands? Right, right. Yeah. Those all remind me of freedom. And uh, after these uh, fun-filled nights at the bar, um, what do you do when you get back home? It's rather dark when I get back in the house, so uh, the shadow the shadow people like to come out and, uh, you know, harass me, you know? 
That's the worst. Have you tried paying your electric bill? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Well, you see, every month, <laughs> the overlords from the power lines like to send us a bill for this made-up thing that, um, I guess these, uh, rulers in our upper society like to call money, which is this societal construct that they think, I guess, must fuel life and death or something like that. So, so every month, if you give these people money, it will make your house brighter. Because they think that we need these things to survive. Because they want us dependent on a financially relied system. I get what you're putting down, Doc. That and I would try an herbal blend sage. <laughs> that should get rid of your shadow people. Thanks, Doc. I'll, I'll keep it in mind. Yes, indeed, indeed. Alright, so let's go on to um, what I would suggest for you for your diagnosis. Let's take a quick commercial break. Wow! So then, you should be able to just slide it right in. It should just go all the way. Oh, sorry! Oh my goodness! I was just showing Johnny my alternative healing method. Which is really helpful, by the way, but enough about that. We're back. And I got my emotional support pillow as well. Oh goodness, I needed that. Do you see how thick this thing is? You better watch out, you could whack someone right across the face with this thing. Take him out. <sighs> with great healing comes great responsibility. So now for your diagnosis, and my plan for you. Now what I want you to do is I'm buying you and your whole family passes to Tank World where you can drive your own tank. And what I want you to do is I want you to take Credence Clearwater's greatest hits and I want you to put it in that tank CD player because they must have them, right? And I want you to blast that shit, man. Blast it. Blast it! You know? I want you then to hear Bad Moon rising up and down the coast, brother. You hear me? I hear you. And what this is going to do, okay, is this is going to remind your vagus nerve in that area of the brain that I studied so much. And it's going to remind it that these traumatic, terrible memories, they don't have to just stay in the past. They can come with you into the present, too. And this is very important and something that a lot of people forget. But this is going to help you. And I want you to take that tank and I want you to ride it out to sea. Ride it out there. Just go crazy. I want you to cross the ocean. And what's really going to heal you is when you become the first person to cross the Atlantic in a tank. And that's gonna solve your problem. Okay, that's gonna God. cure you. I'm talking total heal. I've never healed someone like this before. Not even when they went to the Congo and all those silver eyed monsters were on the news. Boy, I'm surprised they let me back in the States after that one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? I'll just, I'll do anything at this point, Doc. Just whatever you say. Anything? Anything. <laughs> anything. Anything. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, do you have your uh, form of payment ready? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Here you go. <laughs> we can always work something out. Oh, my God. Oh, now I get the double thickness. Oh! Give that a nice squeeze. Oh, boy. 
But you know what? I think you should have both of these back. <laughs> Maybe you can pay another way. <laughs> like after the show, I was thinking, if you want to help me host a giant crying slash hug fest with all of our friends. Not our real friends, the ones in our head. If we're going to do it backstage. Kind of sus. Do you want to heal or what? <laughs> I'll do anything, Doc. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, well, I think that's going to about do it for us today here. Or, you know, as they uh, they like to say when you serve uh, an older customer uh, in food service, that'll do me. <laughs> they say that. Do they? Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's the most awful thing ever. No way. What do they mean? I don't know. <laughs> And next time on Therapy, we'll be delving into the meaning of that'll do me. What do they mean? What does it mean? Thank you.